thank you to Brian for your support on Patreon. Hello everyone, my name is Vivian and welcome back to Temptations Ballad. Now joining with a attempting to nap Bree. Um, so we're gonna try to be a little more calm this time. A little more restrained, a little more relaxed! We'll see how that works out. We are now going to investigate the Bonebreaker Library. The Biblioteca El Bonebreaker. The rambling sound of drunk mercenaries slowly faded away as Cole led his new teammates down a quiet hallway. Technically, Amish hadn't finished their tour of the guild yet before their sparring room interruption, so here Cole was to pick up the slack. Sid and Artemy should really appreciate his thoughtfulness. Oh, there's the snake. Well, technically, you didn't do anything useful whatsoever this afternoon. Your fathers did all the hard work of training and debriefing. <laughs> Cole bapped the small snake on the head and grimaced as a similar s slap sensation mirrored across his own head. It appeared the mind-linking spell had the demon had cast over him was very persistent. Alrighty, Noodle, you're living under my roof and pockets now. You're gonna need to learn to stay on my good side. The snake hissed indignantly. You dare threaten me, puny mortal? As far as I can see, you have no good side. <laughs> His beady red eyes narrowed slightly. A sinister paranoia filled the air. In fact... You know this as well, don't you? I sense it through our connection. Deep inside your subconscious, you know there is a distinct lack of worth in your existence. Malice laughed mockingly. What a wonderful father you have. And despite your insistence otherwise, Hamish has done a wonderful job raising you as well. How disappointing that their efforts are wasted on a man who is nothing but a leech on his friends and family. <laughs> the Cole sighed. Listen, I know you're trying to pull some demony mind games, but it's really hard to take you seriously when you're a tiny wriggling snake. Unhand me, puny mortal! <laughs> Alas, this response is just a feeble attempt to hide your true feeling. <laughs> Go on, I could do this all day. Snow the snake flailed his head wildly in Cole's grip. Our senses are linked! You should be feeling the strangling sensation too! How are you so unfazed? Cole smirked. Is this a sexual joke about to happen? I feel like it is. I've dabbled in erotic asphyxiation here and there. This is nothing new, nothing to me. Got fucking curses! My, my one bargaining chip! Someone behind them loudly cleared their throat. Cole glanced back to see Artemy and Sid standing by, awkwardly watching them. Oh, hey, welcome back, other characters. I hate to interrupt an intimate moment between master and familiar, but didn't you say you were going to show us the rest of the guild? Alright, a tour. I did say that, didn't I? Cole stuffed a screaming noodle back into his pocket before waving his hands theatrically. Allow me to show you my favorite room of the Bonebreaker Mercenary Guild, besides the supply closets. Ta-da! The library! Which I swear to god is just a different angle of the library that was in that really early build of extracurricular activities. <laughs> the one that had like, what, Waffle was his name? I don't know. Cole swung open an uncharacteristically handsome set of doors to reveal a large, cozy library. Shelves lined the walls, and books filled every corner of the room. Clean chairs and piles of books laid scattered across the room as though they were used frequently. Sid's jaws dropped. This place has a library? A frightened pitch colored his tone. Sid has a secret phobia of books. Cole frowned. What a strange reaction. In contrast, a delighted smile spread across Artemy's face as she rushed into the room. Amazing! This library is almost as big as the Grand Cathedral's collection! Cole puffed up his chest proudly. 
Believe it or not, Pop is actually a massive book nerd. He used to read storybooks and legends to me for hours here when I was younger. Despite embracing that muscled barbarian aesthetic, Papa values intelligence in the men he works with. He paused and scowled, which is a mystery why he ended up with Hamish. Artemy studied the library's selection of books while Sid lingered back timidly. What a wide variety of subjects! I've already exhausted all the reading material from the cathedral, but there are so many more options here! Battle strategy? Adventuring tales? Tax evasion techniques? Wait a minute. <laughs> Look at that expression on Artemy's face, it's awesome. Artemy squinted at a nearby hand cover suspiciously as Cole hastily snapped his fingers. The title read, Tax Filing Basics. I swear that title was different a moment ago. Cole coughed loudly. <laughs> uh, you're probably still tired from your sparring match and whatnot. <laughs> Exhaustion can make you see things. I suppose you're right. Artemy tore her gaze from Tax Evasion 101 and towards the rest of the library with excitement. Would it be alright if I continue perusing your book selection on my own? I'm excited to see what kind of stories I can find here. Cole shrugged. Sure, go wild. Stay out of the shelves in the back corner, though. You're not really fit to read them. Artemy glanced at the area Cole gestured towards. A small sign was stuck on the shelf that read, For Adults Only. She let out an indignant huff. Why do you think so little of me, Cole? I am an adult! Clearly I should be allowed to read this material. Cole shrugged. Alright, sure. Go for it, nighty. Oh, here we go. He watched Artemy nod smugly before disappearing into the back of the library. A snicker escaped his throat. Our little Artie is gonna become a changed woman. What kind of smut novel do you think she's gonna pick up? Oh. Hmm? Cole blinked. He glanced behind him and caught sight of Sid lingering by the library entrance timidly. Dude. I acted so weird. It's a library, not a torture chamber. Is he illiterate? I'm not acting weird. Libraries just aren't my kind of thing. Badger hung his head low as he fidgeted with his shirt. Not sure how Mero's gonna take that. I didn't know he was the bookish kind of guy. Cole snorted and gave Sid an encouraging pat on the shoulder. Or hip, he could barely reach half his height. Relax, man. Up is a chill guy. He's pretty happy to have you on board. A worried crease formed across Sid's brow as he continued staring down at his feet. I don't know. I didn't really impress him during our sparring match like Artemy did. I didn't make much of an impression at all. And Mero said that the Bonebreakers only accept the best, right? What if I don't live up to his standards? Panic slowly soaks across Sid's face as he looked up at Cole pleadingly. And now you're telling me that Marrow's a big book guy too? What if he finds out? Cole waved his hand dismissively. You're talking too seriously. Way more seriously than Papa already does. Lighten up, will ya? A mischievous grin spread across Cole's face. Speaking of lightening up... Remember yesterday when we were doing that delivery job? You mentioned that you sent Papa fan letters when you were younger. Well, I did some digging. Okay, see, so he's not illiterate, obviously, as he wrote the fan letters. Did some digging and Sid's ears drooped in horror. Oh no, you didn't! Cole pulled out two wrinkled letters with a from his belt with a grin. Nothing like some embarrassing writings from a younger self to break the ice, huh? Let's see what you wrote. Ooh, wait! Don't look at those! <laughs> oh god. I remember when I was in like 8th grade, our, uh, one of my teachers, he had us write a letter to our future selves, and what he said he was gonna do, he was going to fucking write he was going to mail them out to us in like four years when we were about to graduate high school and he never did it. 
I think it's because he left that school or maybe he just forgot. I don't know. But for a long time, I was really like, hey, I wanted to fucking contact him and try to find him. And be like, hey, I want to read that fucking letter because while I know it's going to be a barrel of cringe, I'm like, it's my barrel of cringe. I wanted to read it. But, eh, whatever. Fearful panic flooded Sid's voice as Cole flipped open one of the letters. A confused silence immediately hung in the air. Sid's heart pounded against his chest as he watched Cole's eyes dart across the page. Oh. Oh, we got the serious music. The spelling and handwriting were utterly atrocious. The entire paper was completely Ill and illegible. Some words are spelled correctly in one paragraph and then completely differently in the next. Letters with similar shapes like B and D were swapped erratically, some lines were skipped, and others were rewritten multiple times. Cole slowly looked up from the letter to Sid's terrified face. How old were you when you wrote this? The badger's shoulders slumped as he buried his face in his hands. I... I've always been shit at reading and writing, okay? It's such a basic thing, but, but I could never do it right. Maybe he's dyslexic. Cole squinted at him curiously. How do I explain it? I have a hard time concentrating. It's like my eyes see the letters, but my brain doesn't recognize them. And sometimes it just feels like the world words float off the pages. Mom and Dad even saved up a ton of money to send me to this prestigious school. Well, prestigious for a commoner like me, so that I could get more help, but... Sid sighed with a grimace. All my teachers kind of gave up and said there was something wrong with me. Cole smiled. What? Please don't tell Marrow. I, I really look up to him and I don't want him to find out that I'm a dumbass too. No, 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 no. Not that. What the hell are those teachers thinking? They just called you an idiot and took your money? Sid scratched his head awkwardly. Well, my mom kind of broke into their offices and shattered a few of the windows after she found out. Good! Your mom made the right move. All your teachers sound like total hacks. Well, they did their best to try to help me. I, I was given the same classes and lessons as everyone else. I, I guess I'm just a little dumber than the all the other students. Ow! Cole thumped him over the head with a nearby hardcover. At least he... Tried. Upon realizing it was too short to reach the badger's head, Cole lifted the book with mage hand and suddenly smacked Sid across the face. What was that for? The only stupid thing you did was believing the bullshit that your teachers told you. Let me ask you, how many people are there in the city of Axia? Sid rubbed his sore head. I think around 50,000. Yes, 50,000 goddamn people. Do you honestly think that all 50,000 of them learn things the exact same way? Sid fell silent. I, I guess not. Of course not! It's not your fault that you learn things differently. You're not stupid and there's nothing wrong with you. Maybe you're just more of a visual learner or something. Your teachers were just too goddamn lazy to teach you in a way that is effective for you. Sid let out a quiet chuckle. The way Cole began fuming over his past teachers made Sid a little nervous, but he'd be hard-pressed to deny that it wasn't a little reassuring. Hey, there's no need to get so worked up. This all happened a long time ago. Shut up! I'm allowed to get pissy here! These people let you grow up believing that you're a dumbass! Like, who does that?! I'll tell you what, Cole let out a frustrated scoff before pulling another book off the shelf with mage hand. I'll teach you how to read and write better. If I manage to do a better job than your teachers, we're gonna team up with Mrs. Shrikewood and burn down that goddamn school. I'm not sure if that's supposed to motivate me or not. Of course it is. Think of all the kids you'd be saving from their lazy teachings. First rule of the Bone Breakers, we never leave anyone behind. Cole's expression sank with a hint of guilt. I, uh... I've never been particularly good at following rules, but... Might as well start today, right? He cleared his throat loudly and plopped onto the floor of the library. The hyena patted the spot next to him as an invitation while he flipped open a book. Come on, 
You want to learn or not? Sid fidgeted with the hem of his tunic self-consciously. I, I don't know if I'm worth all this effort. It, Cole puffed up his cheeks furiously as he jammed a forceful finger at the spot next to him. Sit down and read the damn book! G g all right, all right! What kind of book are we reading? Cole's expression softened into a grin as he showed off the cover. It's called The First Collier. One of my favorite... Collier? Isn't that... One of my favorite fantasy novels when I was little. Papa used to read it to me all the time. It's about an old owl who learned to tame fire. It takes on an apprentice who later invents the art of blacksmithing. And Cole snapped his mouth shut. Up! Oh, no spoilers! Come on, let's read! Despite Cole's contagious enthusiasm, Sid found himself shaking with anxiety as he eyes desperately his, as his eyes desperately scanned the pages. He gulped. Uh, okay. I was born into. I was born into a time of chaos and ever, ever uh, everlasting. Cole struggled to focus on the words as a light headache began to set in. Strange enchantments? Cole cleared his throat. Uh, you skipped a few sentences there, buddy. Oh, sorry, my bad, Sid rubbed his eyes and looked back at the tiny text on the page. He spent another solid five minutes stumbling over the first few sentences before being hit with the realization that he had no idea what he just read. Sid dropped the book back into onto his lap with a de dejected sigh. I... Listen, Cole, I appreciate your help, but maybe I'm just not cut out for this. Cole watched him thoughtfully, scratching his chin. Explain to me what you're seeing when you look on this page. Huh? Well, uh, I can see the words, but the letters feel like they're jumping around whenever I concentrate on them. The text is so tiny, too. My eyes start to water, and it gets really hard to focus. Hmm. Tell you what. Sid yelped as he felt Cole climb over his leg and sat snugly between his legs. The small hyena held the book in one hand, observing it for several moments before snapping his fingers. Whoa! Bright light. Hey! That's fucking cool! Look, he's like illustrating the book! That's fucking sweet! Sid gasped as the words glowed and literally slid off the pages of the book. Colorful wisps of illusion magic wove itself into the air as illustrations came to life in front of him. How big do you want the text? Is this good? I can make the handwriting less wavy, too, if that helps. Yeah, this is a lot better. Sid cleared his throat and stared at the glowing letters in front of him. Times are different now than they were when I was young. Cole's fingers danced with more illusion magic. As Sid read aloud, each line of text slid upwards to reveal the next in large, bold lettering. When he got to the part of the story where the protagonist encountered his first forest fire, the illusions danced to life to illustrate the sea of trees and flame. That is so fucking cool. That is so fucking cool! This whole thing is cool! Not just like, the oh, he's, the thing he's doing, but why he's doing it. This is such a cool thing that he's doing to help. I grew up not knowing I was autistic. That I didn't have much in the way of mental health awareness growing up in medical or whatever, and things were di more difficult for me. Seemingly simpler things took and still take more time for me to be able to handle. And I never really had anyone growing up that would have gone out of their way like this, or would have or could have. This is very heartwarming. All his timid insecurities were forgotten as Sid became entra enraptured in a novel for the first time in his life. From the corner of his eye, he saw Cole watch him with a satisfied smile as he pulled more illustrations to accompany the tale. 
Sid's heart trembled as he allowed himself this tiny bit of pride and joy. <sighs> the little reading session went on for what felt like hours. Is Artemy just gone? This is Maybe she's just really liking the smut books, I don't know. Sid read and read until his voice became hoarse. I know that feeling. But he wanted to keep going. At some point, Cole's illusions began to flicker with fatigue and they were forced to stop for the day. Before they left the library, Sid pulled his friend into a firm and grateful hug. Hey, thank you for all this. I, I don't know, but for the first time in my life, I, I don't feel like I'm unfit to just be here. Cole had flushed a light shade of pink before clearing his throat loudly. Yeah, whatever. I'm just helping out because I want to spite your asshole teachers. Remember, you gotta help me burn down their offices sometime in the future, got it? Sid let out a small laugh. If you really want to, I'd go anywhere you need me to be. Boss, that's a promise. That's so nice. Oh, we got the funny music. Here we go. Meanwhile, in the back of the library, for the, in the four adults only section, Artemy left out, let out a horrified gasp and tossed her book to the floor. Oh, what? what is this filth? I had no idea such literature existed. Artemy rubbed her eyes in horror in an effort to purge the words from her sight. Cole was right. Maybe I wasn't ready for this. I must cease my reading at once. Holy night shouldn't be anywhere near such gross and obscene nonsense. Is she about to slide back in? Artemy took several steps towards the exit before glancing back sheepishly at the book on the floor. Oh. <laughs> oh. Gosh. She's a little curious. I don't know. Dots. She gulped and shook her head furiously. No, no! What am I thinking? This is an absolute embarrassment of the name of the creator's chosen! Dots? Artemis' face flushed as she gingerly plucked the book off the floor. But the story was just starting to get good. Uh, it would be a shame to stop right now. Yes, yeah, surely there are people who read these things... These kinds of things. <laughs> there are people who read these kinds of stories for the plot. <laughs> Shiro, Shiro, you're taking the piss. You're taking the piss. You're taking the Mickey. You take. You are mocking me. <laughs> Not just me, but in general, man. I can't be the only one. The knight plopped back into her seat and. Flip through the pages eagerly. I'll just skip the part with the filth and move on with the story and... And... <laughs> Artemy glanced around the room with a guilty expression. After a moment, she flipped right, to where, right back to where she left off. Oh my god! Oh, talk about corruption of champions. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Okay, Spoof's going nuts about something. I'm gonna see what's going on with him. On the next episode, we will, uh, I guess, check the library battle strategies section. But until then, everyone, thank you all for watching. If you want to play this game for yourself, it is free. Link's in the description. It's in development, so be patient. And support them and support me if you feel like. The links are also in the description for that. Uh, there's also in the cards up above links to other stuff that I have done as well and on the end slate um, yeah that's about it subscribe if you want that'd be much appreciated thank y'all very much I'll talk to y'all later alright bye everyone <laughs>